Here, Jen Caruso and the keeper. Here we go. This could be the game. Caruso, what a move. Shot. Good evening and welcome to Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Soccer. My name is Peter Zimbor. I'll be calling the action in this game as the Lady Boxers take on the Lady Whalers of New Bedford High School. This is a divisional matchup. Both schools are members of the Big Three. Brockton will be wearing the white jerseys with black shorts. New Bedford wearing the red jerseys with white shorts. New Bedford hailing from just south of Brockton. More towards Rhode Island. New Bedford actually borders Rhode Island. Shot on goal to begin this game is saved. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Brockton Lady Boxers who are on the field right now as we'll be playing two 40-minute halves in high school girls soccer. Right now we have 39 minutes and 24 seconds left to go in the half. And bear in mind, as I give you the time, throughout the duration of this broadcast as to how much time is left in the half. It is a rough estimation of how much time is left. There is a scoreboard running here at Marciano Stadium which tells us how much time is left and the score. However, the official time is kept by the referees on the field. So what is on the scoreboard and what the officials have on the field doesn't always add up precisely, but it is around the same place. Starting lineup for the Brockton Lady Boxers in this game, number one, senior goalkeeper Lauren Seaver. Number seven, midfielder Mariah Texera. Number eight, forward and midfielder, sophomore Nicole Fernandez. Number nine, the senior defender Kaylee Mency. Number 10, Naranda, Narita Montron, the forward. Number 11, Morale Marion, senior midfielder. Number 12, Haley Miller. Number 13, Lindsey Gomes. Number 18, Maya Powers. Number 22, junior forward Jennifer Caruso. And number 24, junior midfielder Ariana Silvia. The Brock and Lady Boxers are coached by Andrea Tassinari, now in her 13th year as head coach for the Lady Boxers soccer program. She was noticeably absent from the sidelines during BCA's most recent Lady Boxers broadcast, however, is back on the sideline coaching these Lady Boxers tonight. And Brockton may have an opportunity to score coming up, but the defender for New Bedford is going to get in the way and knock that ball out of bounds. Starting lineup for the New Bedford Whalers in this game is number one, Amy Reese, the junior goalkeeper. Number two, Emma Finnerty, senior midfielder. Number three, Taylor Soares, junior defender. Number four, Emma Vasquez, senior midfielder. Number six, Alana Gracia, sophomore defender. Number 10, Lucy McDowell, senior midfielder. Number 11, Alicia DeMello, junior midfielder. Number 13, Cassie White, who is a junior defender and midfielder, and she's actually the backup goalie, but she's in at midfield right now. Number 15, Jacinda McCartney, the senior defender. Number 17, Taylor Souza, senior forward. And number 21, Jillian Amorim, the junior defender. The head coach for the New Bedford Lady Whalers is Nick Adams. And we mentioned earlier that Coach Taz, Andrea Tassinari, is in her 13th year as head coach for the Lady Boxer soccer team. Her assistants is Rob Texera, Denise Venucci, and Jack McCarrick. Venucci handles the junior varsity program, and McCarrick handles the freshman program. For the New Bedford Lady Whalers, their assistant coaching staff consists of assistant coach Ken Calveo, who is down on the sidelines helping out Nick Adams with today's proceedings. Once again, this is a broadcast of BCA Brockton Community Access. BCA with three distinctive channels, Channel 9, the Public Access Channel, Channel 12, the Government Access Channel, and Channel 98, the Educational Access Channel, which is the channel you are most likely to be watching as it is the flagship home of Brockton Boxer Sports, including what you're seeing right now, Lady Boxer Soccer. This weekend, we'll be bringing you 
Brock and Boxers football as the Boxers look to go two and one following a dominant win against the Weymouth Wildcats Friday night here at Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. Thirty-four minutes remaining in the first half between the Lady Boxers and the Lady Whalers. We are scoreless here. Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. BCA crew out in full effect tonight, bringing you the sights and sounds you see on your screen. Cameraman, award-winning director, Newbie Rateau, Aaron Tebow, and Mike Simmons. And down in the truck, we've got award-winning director, Paul Manaville and Matt Nelson. The last time we did a broadcast here on BCA for Lady Boxers Soccer, Newbie Rateau was publicly questioning whether Paul Mandeville should still be known as an award-winning director because he has not won a directing award in eight years. But we came to the conclusion that once you win an award, you are forever award-winning. So he is, yes, the award-winning Paul Mandeville. Fair amount of members of the Brockton High student body have stayed after school here on this Tuesday afternoon to support their Lady Boxers soccer team. Just under 10 minutes into this game, New Bedford kicks the ball into Brockton territory and the goalkeeper for Brockton will pick this up. She is bumped by a New Bedford player and we have a whistle as a result of that.
ball at midfield right now. New Bedford doing their best to keep it in Brockton territory. Brockton trying to send it back down the field into New Bedford territory. As the ball's hovered between the 40 yard hash marks of the football field for the past minute or so, Brockton gets it into New Bedford territory. Should mention that the white hash marks and sidelines on the field are clearly the aspects of this field that stand out from a visual standpoint. However, that is actually not the bounds markers for the soccer field. The bounds markers for the soccer field are red on the field. They have white yard lines and hash marks for the football field, red for the soccer team. The red more difficult to see to the naked eye from our vantage point because it's darker and doesn't stand out as much as the white, but that's what these players down in the field are playing with. So if it looks like they're outside of the white boundaries, they may not be out of bounds as long as they're within the red. 28 minutes left to go here in the first half. We are scoreless in this big three divisional matchup between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the New Bedford Whalers. Once again, Peter Zimbor here calling the action at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. It was one year and one day ago that here at Rocky Marciano Stadium, that beautiful statue of Brockton's own former undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano, was unveiled, the largest sports statue in North America of the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. That was unveiled one day and one year ago from the date of this taping. It was September the 23rd of 2012 when that statue was unveiled at a grand ceremony here at Marciano Stadium that was attended by thousands upon thousands of Brocktonians and sports and boxing fans from across the South Shore and beyond. And a lot of political and boxing dignitaries, including legendary boxing promoter Don King, former heavyweight champions Larry Holmes and John Ruiz, former lightweight and junior middleweight champion Vinny Paz was here in attendance.
24 minutes left to go here in the opening half between Brockton and New Bedford. We are scoreless here in the City of Champions. In past years, on various athletic fields, Brockton and New Bedford have had some amazing contests, particularly on the basketball court. There have been some playoff basketball games between Brockton and New Bedford, contested both here in Brockton and in New Bedford, that have just been stellar. BCA's own Nubi Rateau, who is on camera tonight, for whatever reason is a big fan of the city of New Bedford. Seems to spend a lot of time there, is always glad to go when we have to travel there. Rumor has it it's the Portuguese woman that he likes. And by rumor, I mean what he told me one time in his SUV while going to New Bedford. New Bedford known as the Whalers. At one time, New Bedford was the whaling capital of the world. Well, in capital of New England as well. Yet when Hartford got a hockey team, they were known as the Whalers. But now they're moved to North Carolina and they're called the Hurricanes. Is there a lot of Hurricanes in Carolina? I don't think there is. Why are they called the Carolina Hurricanes? That's like when the Houston Oilers moved to Tennessee and were known as the Tennessee Oilers. After a few years, people basically said, there's no oil in Tennessee. They changed the name of the Tennessee Titans. That hasn't stopped other teams, though. The Minneapolis Lakers moved to Los Angeles. There's no lakes in Los Angeles. The New Orleans Jazz moved to Utah. Is there any jazz in Utah? I'm not so sure there's music. 22 minutes left to go here in the half with scoreless at Colombo Field. What's another sports team that moved geographically, kept the name, and their name makes no sense to their location? See what I can come up with. The Tennessee Oilers, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Utah Jazz come to the top of my head. Nice pickup by the goalkeeper for the Whalers. So instead of whaling, what is New Bedford famous for? Can anyone think of anything that New Bedford is well known for? Portuguese food. We already mentioned the Portuguese earlier. You know what's interesting about these soccer games as opposed to the football games? The football games are so populated in the stands that you really can't hear individual conversations. But the soccer games, the people are spread out far enough that you can hear people individually talking to each other sometimes. Some of the stuff these uh, young high school students talk about, well, it's very high school-esque, we'll just say that.
and we have a down Brockton player on the field. And we've got some substitutions for both Brockton and New Bedford as that Brockton player makes her way to her feet and seems to be okay. She was just a tad slow getting up. Just over 18 minutes left to go here in the first half and we are scoreless at Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the New Bedford Lady Whalers. Just got two consecutive bizarre text messages in a row from a number I don't recognize that said the words violence and also the Miami Marlins. Who is texting me this random stuff on this Tuesday afternoon? Evidently, it's a member of the BCA crew. Not sure what the meaning of either of those text messages was, but more are coming in as we speak, hopefully with an explanation. For my conversations, apparently he would like me to talk about the Miami Marlins and violence. Sixteen and a half minutes left to go here at Marciano Stadium. And we are scoreless. So he thinks that it doesn't make sense that the Miami Marlins are called the Marlins. What's the violence text about? He thinks New Bedford's famous for violence. Is that what he's trying to say? I mean, those who live in glass houses should not throw stones. I don't know if you've read the paper lately, but Brockton does not appear to be a haven for civility. So I would say that Matt Nelson is uh, probably shouldn't bring that one up. Yeah, that's a cheap shot, Matt Nelson. He's, he, he's, he's uh, concurring that that's what that text was about. I mean, we live in a town where a guy got beaten to death with a hammer a few weeks ago. You can't really say that. But apparently Miami does not have any Marlins. Marlins a fish, correct? So apparently Miami doesn't have any of that. Does the state of Florida have Marlins? Because formerly it was the Florida Marlins. Were they located in Miami? I don't know. Florida's going to be one of the worst states for professional sports. Their teams just don't draw any fans. The Dolphins don't draw fans. I guess the Miami Heat have some bandwagon fans since they've got LeBron James. We'll see how long that lasts. Tampa Bay Rays. More Red Sox fan at Rays games than there are Tampa Bay Rays fans. Same thing with the Miami Marlins. Not particularly well attended in their games. They love their Tim Tebow, though, in Florida, don't they? Former Florida Gator. I 
I went to Florida once a few years ago. I was broadcasting the final fight of the legendary Hector Macho Camacho's boxing career. And at age 48, he lost to a guy named Saul Duran. I will tell you this right now. Even at age 48, Hector Camacho would beat me in a fight. But I probably could have lasted a few rounds with him. He was so fat, pudgy, and out of shape, and brain damaged for that matter, that I think his muscle memory would have gotten me out of there. But I think I could have ran for a few rounds from him. He was so slow. Slurring his words, really sad to watch. They don't require a CAT scan to box in Florida. So he, he got away with that one. He was a mouthful of mumbles. He's long since passed. Not long since, recently passed away within the last year, got shot and killed. 12 minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the first half. We're scoreless here in Brockton between the Lady Boxers and the New Bedford Lady Whalers. I wonder if there were any actual Lady Whalers in the whaling days. Not to sound sexist, but whaling tends to be something that you would foresee men doing more than women, particularly in the time period where New Bedford was so prominent within the whaling industry. Not to say the ladies can't do it. Some of them probably better at it than men. Let's face facts. Men are greedy, disgusting pigs who just about ruined this planet. Woman, I'm on your side. We are nearly 75% through this opening half, and we are still scoreless. Not the team with particularly that many shots on goal either throughout this half. The midfield and the defenders of each team, respectively, doing a fine job. The goalkeepers really haven't had to do all that much throughout the course of this game. Shot on goal, forthcoming, however, potentially, no. For out here in Brock and reacting to the fine play on the field. Mentioned earlier that there's the statue of Rocky Marciano in the end zone here at Marciano Stadium that was put up one year and one day ago from the day we are taping this game, September the 24th, 2013. That statue went up September the 23rd of 2012. It was 52 years ago on that day that Rocky Marciano became the heavyweight champion of the world with a 13th round knockout of then heavyweight champ Jersey Joe Walcott to throating him and becoming the heavyweight champ. Now, interestingly, he knocked him out in the 13th round. By today's standards, championship boxing matches are 12 rounds instead of 15 rounds as they were then. Marciano was behind on the scorecards. He would have lost by today's standards in that fight. He also would not have been a heavyweight by today's standards. He was a little guy. Weighed about 190 pounds. He'd be a cruiserweight today. It was a different time, a different era.
The official scorekeeper for today's game and myself were talking before the game about how it's nice to see both teams wearing jerseys with the numerals on their jerseys so prominently featured as it's easy to distinguish who has the ball and who scores goals. Not always the case with all high school soccer teams. Take Durfee, for example. What is going on with those Durfee jerseys? You just can't see the numbers. They're little. They're red, I think, on black jerseys. Dark on dark. Not particularly visible. But today, we have not had any reason to really call too many numbers as not only has no one scored just yet, but not a lot of shots on goal. New Bedford's going to launch this one from way downtown. That goes over the net and sails out of bounds. It's a nice, cool, and crisp early fall, early evening here at Marciano Stadium. No frost just yet, so I'll still see some insects here and there. The geese are flying still. They'll be gone soon enough. Soon enough it'll be time for Halloween. Then as soon as Halloween ends, it'll be time for Thanksgiving. And you can probably find Christmas decorations on sale at Walmart now. I have a friend of mine who said to me yesterday that he hates Christmas. Who hates Christmas? Doesn't like the commercial the commercialization of it, but oh, oh, here we go. Shot saved. New Bedford had a clean shot, and the Brockton goalkeeper said, "No way, Jose!" Excellent job by Lauren Seaver, the goalkeeper for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Good job, Lauren. Four minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the half. A well-played game defensively by both Brockton and New Bedford. Playing some football here on a Tuesday night. Recently in my morning radio program, the Metro South Morning Show PM in the AM on AM 1460, the new WXVR, I was chatting with Roger Earl, the drummer for the band Foghat, who's originally from England, evidently. And he says that the American soccer program has grown by leaps and bounds over the years, and he thinks that America is within three or four World Cups of actually winning the entire World Cup. And that's coming from the English guy that played drums on Slow Ride. So that's got to be worth something. Slow Ride is the former ringtone of former Brockton Community Access Assistant General Manager Mike Tremblay. Another scoring opportunity potentially for New Bedford. No, broken up by the Brockton defense. Excellent job, Lady Boxers. Then again, the United States women's soccer team has already won the Women's World Cup. The women's team is far more decorated than the men's team on the national level. Mia Hamm, 
Heather Mills. I met Heather Mills a few times when she was playing for the Boston Breakers. I was doing some work for a local video production company where I had to interview various members of the Boston Breakers about things pertaining to that organization for some promotional packages they were doing. I wanted to ask her about her FHM and Maxim magazine spreads, but uh, the video production company said, no, nah, don't do that. It's too bad. Heather Mills was impressive. Just over two minutes to go in the half. Got a whistle and New Bedford with the free kick. Ba boom. And the first half comes to a conclusion. So through one half of play, we are scoreless here at Marciano Stadium between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the New Bedford Lady Whalers. We'll step aside for a quick break. Second half action resumes or begins after this. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. And we're back at Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium in the city of champions, Brockton, Massachusetts, on the campus of Brockton High School, where, as we enter the second half, we are scoreless between your Brockton Lady Boxers and the New Bedford Lady Whalers. Once again, you're watching BCA Sports Brockton Community Access, the educational access channel, Channel 98, your home for Brockton Boxer Sports. Peter Zimbor calling the action. Got some young middle school students here around the tracks who are helping the officials out when the ball goes out of bound, retrieving the soccer balls and whatnot. A student from West Middle School handling the duties today. I found out recently that West Middle School is now known as the West Wolverines. 
When I attended West Junior High, when I first got there, we were known as the West Blue Devils. And then, apparently, there were some complaints about uh, the rather devilish nature of that nickname. So the school decided they were going to change the name of the school. And they had a contest where students could write in what the new name of the school would be. So everyone's coming up with cool names and submitting them into the big bowl of suggestions at the office. I actually wrote West Wolverines. However, we were not changed to the West Wolverines just there. Nice save. There was the West Wolverines, the West Wolves, the West Wildcats, the West Werewolves. There's a lot of wolves, actually. It's the whole W thing. Kids love alliteration. It tends to be their favorite literary device. So after weeks and weeks of this contest, they were going to make the announcement on the morning announcements as to what the new name of the school was going to be. Everyone was ready with anticipation. What's the new name of the school going to be? And the assistant principal at the time, Mr. Rudenstein, announced, we are now the West All-Stars. And a collective groan of, huh? went through each and every room permeating throughout the building as our assistant principal had now decided that we were going to have a name as braggadocious as the West All-Stars, which would almost render the actual All-Stars to be not as significant because you were already on a team called the All-Stars. And they were known as the All-Stars until I left West Junior High, but subsequently since then, they've changed their name to the West Wolverines. Now just shortly before that, the West football team, which is not affiliated with West Middle School, but they try to keep the names of the teams and the colors in sync with that of the middle schools, they just bought brand new jerseys with a blue devil on the shoulder. And they're probably to this day playing with that blue devil on their shoulder. When I first went to junior high, I had a screen name on America Online Instant Messenger. We're going old school kids. And it was B-L-U Devil, Blue Devil. Because, you know, I was very proud to go to West and be a member of the West Blue Devils. And, I mean, this is the days of chat rooms and stuff, AOL Instant Messenger. Now, I want you to take into consideration how I spelt Blue Devil again, B-L-U D-E-V-I-L. There's no E. B-L-U-E. No, no E. B-L-U-D-E-V-I-L. People online thought I was blood evil instead of blue devil. They thought I was blood evil. And they thought I was just some, you know, weird kid with some weird issues. That I just took two sinister sounding words, put them together, and called myself blood evil. That was not the case. Shot on goal, perhaps forthcoming, not quite. This one's going to be a little bit wide. But back to my original point, that young West Wolverine soccer player doing a fine job at gathering soccer balls that go out of bounds for the officials for today's contest. When I was in junior high, there was the West All-Stars. The North Stars, see that was nothing. North was already the North Stars. Now we were the West All-Stars. It was almost like our stars better than yours. It was, it was really stupid. South was the South Dragons. East was the East Eagles. And that's all there was. Now there's all these other middle schools. There's a middle school at the Raymond School, which is directly across the street from North Middle School. Literally, you can throw a pebble from one property and land in another, and you don't even have to have a strong arm to do so. I think they're the Raymond Rockets or something. Once again, alliteration coming into play. I don't know what the Davis is. Anyone know what the Davis School is? What else is there? Ashfield has a middle school. I don't know what their nickname is. And the Pluff Academy.
And that girl from New Bedford took a bit of a tumble. Thirty-two minutes left here in the game. We're scoreless at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. That is number 22 for New Bedford. Bianca Rodriguez with the ball, and it goes out of bounds. And that West Wolverine is going to give the player the ball to get back into play. Good job by that West Wolverine. Well, we, we've got a whistle. What's going on with this whistle? What did not? Th what did the referee not like? All right, we're going to throw the ball in again. Okay, we'll do that. This is number 13 for the Lady Boxers throwing the ball in, that being Lindsey Gomes. Lindsey with a nice throw and uh, hits the head of a New Bedford player and stays in bounds. Number 10 for Brock with the ball right now, Narinda Montrand, or Narita Montrand. Don't want to add an extra N in a name that's not there. Narita. That's a fun name, Narita. Shot on goal. Oh. No cigar this time. Ten minutes into the second half, we are still scoreless here at Marciano Stadium. Opportunity, opportunity, knock in. Oh, saved. And Maurice New Bedford knocks that one out of there. Brockton having more shots on goal seemingly here in the second half than they did in all of the first. Number 17 for New Bedford, Taylor Souza chases the ball out of bounds.
little bit of a whistle. And Alexis Ferreira throwing the ball in for New Bedford. Gets it into Jacinda McCartney, who is tripped and falls to the ground. Jacinda McCartney, no relation to Paul McCartney, who was rumored to have been at a Brockton Lady Boxers game earlier this season. According to some broadcasters that I heard, I don't know if they were being facetious or not. Did anyone watch the Emmys on Sunday night? Carrie Underwood did a cover of the Beatles yesterday. That was horrible. How do you make a song that's so good just so bad? I watched the Emmys intermittently on Sunday night. Every time I turned on the Emmys, it was a tribute to another dead guy. Tribute to James Gandolfini, dead. Tribute to the kid who OD'd from Glee, he's dead. A tribute to Liberace. Do we really need a tribute to Liberace circa 2013? Like how long ago did Liberace die? Has Liberace been alive in my lifetime? All right, they did the movie this year with Matt Damon, and uh, who, who else was in that movie? Matt Damon, who else? Michael Douglas, was it? Michael Douglas. I'll tell you right now, I turned on that movie midway through at the exact wrong point when I was eating. I lost my appetite very quickly. Thank you, HBO, for that night of skipping dinner. What did Liberace even sing? I, I, I know he played piano, but is there any songs he performed that were particularly noteworthy? I mean, I can't think of a single Liberace song. I think of Liberace doing high kicks with the Radio City Rockets at the first WrestleMania. That's what I think of when I think of Liberace. Maybe that's just me. When they did the thing at the Emmys for all of the dead people, everyone who died over the past year, you know what surprise was in there? Emmanuel Stewart, the guy that trained Tommy Hearns when he fought Marvin Hagler. Apparently he was a matter of member of the Academy. He died over the past year and they, they recognized him. Like, didn't expect that. Been asked if he was in the movie The Fighter by Mickey Ward. He may have been as an HBO broadcaster. That, that might have been it. That potentially was it. I read recently they're going to make a new Rocky Balboa movie where Rocky Balboa trains Apollo Creed's nephew. Will Sylvester Stallone let that series die, or what? Thank <laughs> you. 
Brockton's going to knock this one out of bounds. It was a potential shot on goal by New Bedford. Brockton's defenders say no way. 21 minutes left to go in the game. We're scoreless here in the City of Champions. We're on the campus of Brockton High School at Rocky Marciano Stadium. With the new principal of Brockton High is Miss Sharon Wolder. After Dr. Susan Zakowitz stepped down after a number of years as principal here at Brockton High. Probably principal for what, maybe 10 years, 11, 12. She was the principal for all four years of my time at Brockton High, but not all years of all four years. We had Eugene Marrow for the first half of my freshman year. We had a different house master in my building. Every year I was at Brockton High, I'm pretty sure, in the Azure building. I was in the Azure building. I'm trying to think of who they were. We had uh, Mr. Bronco when I was first there. He was an assistant. Who was the who was the real house master, the top guy at that time? Donegan. Donovan, yes, Donovan. Then as a sophomore, I'm trying to think of who we had. I think we had a female house master. She used to wear lime green pants. My junior year, we had... Oh, I can't think of the guy's name. Lanky guy, tall and lanky. Mr. Jolly. Mr. Jolly, the house master my junior year. Then my senior year, Mr. Crowley. Mr. Crowley suspended me one time. I have to say, you couldn't like someone more who suspended you than Mr. Crowley. It was so matter of fact and business like, hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. well you know, I'm getting suspended not too well. Yeah, it's not good. He goes, so uh, how are we going to do this, in-house or outhouse? I'm like, well, if I don't have to be at school, I, I'd rather not come. He's like, I hear you, buddy. We're going to do outhouse, and uh, I'll see you in three days. All right, thanks. Shook hands. That was it. Got suspended for being late too many times. Seven times in one term, he gets suspended. I was late like 50 times. They only caught me seven. By like 30 seconds late every time, I would be outside as that bell rang every day, rushing into the building. And it depended on whether or not I got there when the teacher was to my name in the attendance, whether I was late or not, every day. I was the last kid on the attendance sheet from my class, so I did have that benefit. I don't think too many of the teachers that taught me at Brockton High are there anymore. Mr. Burley's still there, I know that. That might be it. Mr. Collins is still there in the green. Th those two are probably it. Everyone else has either moved on from education or in their in different positions within the Brockton school system. Some of them are you know, like in charge of departments now and stuff. Looking at our cameraman, Aaron Tebow, right now. I pose this question to him, Aaron. Anybody know of the whereabouts of Mr. Buba? Mr. Buba was the TV production teacher. I mean, think about this. L let's think about Mr. Buba's influence on a lot of people on this crew right now. We were, we're, we're all still working in television. Think about that. The Bubinator has a legacy. He was living in Cape Cod last I heard. Shot on goal, save. Well, Mr. Bube, if you're out there watching, we salute you.
is Aaron Tebow having a discussion right now about how if Mr. Bieber was absent for one day, you knew he was gone for the whole week? Is that the discussion you're having? You're talking about the Bieber being out for one day, knowing he was gone for the week? <laughs> if he was out sick for one day, he's out for a week. So you had all you have all three lunches all the time. If you had a fourth period, it was the best. Ball out of bounds. I remember after I graduated from Brockton High, it'd be 11.08 in the morning, and I would immediately think to myself, ah, it's time for first lunch. I think it's even earlier now. They have kids eating at like 10.30 in the morning now? No? 11.08? Okay. I was going to say 10.30. That's, that's a little early. 11.08's early, but... And there is a vehement dispute from the coaches of New Bedford with the officials. Brockton players looking towards the officials as well. Emotions are running high here in Brockton. The referee is speaking with the coach Nick Adams for New Bedford. Is he giving him a warning? No yellow card just yet. I've never seen a high school coach get a yellow card. I'd like to see that. I don't think I've ever seen a high school coach get ejected from a game. It's had to have happened. Emotions run high at high school girls soccer games. Don't you always love those parents that argue like balls and strikes with umpires at Little League games? Those parents are the best. Those kids are talking about those parents on psychiatrist couches today. I've been told in Maine that there is a dispute going on where th they want to make a rule that parents going to soccer games can only clap politely. They can't boo or jeer or do anything else. I mean, you know, common sense is just prevailing. People should know what to do. Hopefully Maine's just not that crazy that they have to make a rule like that. A friend of mine's a state rep in Maine. I'll ask him about this, get his position. One particular league in Maine. I was in Maine over the weekend. More opportunities here in the second half for Brockton as opposed to the first, but still we're scoreless with 13 minutes to go. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, and that one's just going to be just right. If Brockton does score a goal, I'm going to make a request that our cameraman, Newbie Rateau, venture to the booth immediately in the aftermath of the goal and try to yell, goal, and keep the one syllable going for a full 60 seconds. I throw the challenge out to you, Newbie Rateau. So if the fine folks in the production truck can uh, let him know of this challenge, I would be appreciative of it. And then, if and when Brockton scores a goal, he can uh, venture up to the booth and attempt to do just so.
Brockton with the shot on goal now. This could be big. This could be gargantuan. It could also be anticlimactic, but we'll see what it is. It's the latter. Ball goes out of bounds. Brockton looking for a shot on goal. And that's going to go out of bounds. Now the Brockton coaching staff upset with the officials. Seven minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this game. We're scoreless. These folks are getting restless. Brockton going down the field. Lindsey Gomes.
Brockton made with a shot on goal coming up. Crowd excited, crowd excited, shot. Goal! That would be Lindsey Gomes with the goal. Brockton leads one to nothing with just over five minutes to go in the game. Newby Rateau, are you up to the challenge? Come on up here, Newby. Brockton on the board, one to nothing. Can the fine folks in the production truck let Newby Rateau know of the challenge that has been issued to him due to the Lindsey Gomes goal? Any word from the folks down in the truck? Is Newby going to try to say the word goal for a full 60 seconds? The world wants to know. Does Newby know about his challenge? He says no. Since when has he been bashful? No newbie credit for him. One to nothing, nevertheless, Brockton on top over New Bedford. Four minutes to go in the game. Lindsey Gomes putting Brockton on the board late in the game. And we'll see if Brockton can now hang on to this 1-0 lead and go home with a shutout victory. The clock is stopped with two minutes to go here at Marciano Stadium. What that means is that there is less than two minutes to go on the official game clock. The official game clock is kept by the referees on the field. So Brockton leads 1-0. They are very, very close from going home with a big three-divisional win against New Bedford.
But we must be in the winding seconds of this particular game between Brockton and New Bedford. New Bedford trying to tie this game. Tries to tie the game. Oh, Brockton defenders are going to sneak it from her. Whistle blown. Game over. Brockton defeats New Bedford by a score of one to nothing. A big three divisional win for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Lindsey Gomes with the lone goal for Brockton. They defeat New Bedford one to nothing. For everyone here at BCA Sports, I'm Peter Zimbor. Brockton defeats New Bedford by a score of one to nothing. We'll see you next time.